Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look today at direct linear variation. Basically, if one goes up, the other goes up. That's a good way to remember this one. They have directly proportionate or they relate to each other directly. All right. So we're talking about two different variables, the function of x or f of x and x. All right. Basically, with direct linear variation, those two variables, f of x and x, have a consistent ratio. All right. So if x increases, f of x also increases. If f x decreases, f of x will decrease. All right. Let me show you an example of this from like a real world example. If I go to a two dollar store, all right, that's a store where everything goes two dollars. All right. The amount of money I spend increases as the amount of items I pick up. All right. If I pick up one item, I'll pay two dollars. Here's the table. If I pick up uh, two items, then I would have four dollars. If I picked up three items, it would cost six dollars, and so on and so on. So as the number of items increases, my total cost also increases. I don't know if you noticed some patterns here with this, but here are some things. They are all equivalent fractions. Look at that. One half, two fourths, three sixths, four eighths. These are all equivalent fractions, or in other words, they're proportional. Right or equivalent ratios. Okay, so there is a consistent ratio between these numbers. All right, and the equation to calculate the total cost. We don't need to make a table to say the total number of items is a thousand. Let's say about a thousand things. I wouldn't have to count every single item. I just have an equation that my total is that my total cost is the number of items times two. 2 is my constant value that I'm multiplying. Okay? In this case, the $2 um, that I spend at the store. Each item costs $2. That's going to be a constant. I multiply $2 times however many items I get. All right? And so now let's talk about this in terms of math. Um, in a math table, it will look like this. You'll have x, that's your variable that you're actually going to be plugging into the equation, and the function at x down here. When you're given x and the function of x, and you're told this is a direct linear variation, then you can calculate using this equation to find out what is the constant between the two. Okay? Here is the, the equation. The function at x is equal to our constant k times our x value. So you might look at that and go, oh, well, if my x value is 1, 1 times 4 is 4. And so you can say, well, the constant is 4. And in this case, it's pretty easy to calculate. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But just a quick reminder about that k. That's going to be our constant. In the previous example, it was the cost of each item. That was our $2. $2 times the number of items that we had. Okay? It's called the constant of variation. So some questions, they might just say, what is the constant of variation? Okay? So there is a way to, to calculate the constant of variation, and that's just to rearrange or transform this equation to solve for our value of k. k is equal to the function of x divided by x. All right? In other words, you would divide both sides of this equation by x, and that's what you would get. So in our case, we can plug in the value, our function at x is 4, our x value is 1, and 4 divided by 1 is 4. We already knew that. We could have said 1 times 4 is 4. We, we could have figured it out using the original equation. But here is the transformed equation solving for our variable, or our constant, I'm sorry, our variable of k, which is the constant. So now that we have our constant of 4, we can solve each of these and fill in the table. Because our constant value, k, is 4, we can take our original equation, our function of x is k times 4, and just make it 4 times, or k times x, just make it 4 times x. And then we'll just substitute. Remember, these x values, they're the input values. So we take them and we plug them into the function, and our output is our function at x. So let's plug 2 in and see what we get. 2 times 4 is 8. All right. Let's plug 3 in and see what we get. 3 times 4 is 12. And we're going to plug 4 in 
for our last one. There's our input value of 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And that's how we solve if we're asked to fill in a table using direct linear variation. You'll notice again equivalent fractions all across the board. Every single one of these is an equivalent fraction. And they all follow that um, f, is, f of x is equal to our constant times our x value. The types of questions that you might be asked when you're dealing with direct linear variation, this is one type. Um, first off, I guess one type would be fill in the table. Find the constant and fill in the table. That's what we did in the previous question. In this one, they might ask, is this direct linear variation? 2, 4, 6, 8, 3, 5, 7, 9. I mean, it seems to have a pattern there. But what we would need to do is see, does it have a constant? All right? That's what it's asking. Is there a constant of variation here in these fractions? Or in other words, are they equivalent fractions? Is 2 thirds equal to 4 fifths and 6 sevenths and 8 ninths? Okay, are they equivalent fractions? We can use these equations to actually calculate that. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this equation for the constant. If this is direct linear variation, then my constant should be the same. And so let's pick the first one. My constant is f of x divided by x, 3 over 2. All right. Now I'm going to look at my next set here. Um, f of x is 5, and x is equal to 4. So 5 over 4. Hmm. Now I'm looking at those fractions, and I know that they're not equivalent fractions. 3 over 2 is the same as 6 over 4, not 5 over 4. And we could continue. Is 7 divided by 6 equal to those? No. Is 9 divided by 8? No. So those, we can tell that the variation is not constant. It's not a constant variation. So this is not a direct linear variation. This table is not direct linear variation. So if you're, again, this type of question, quick way to check, is there a constant between them? You can also just look, are these equivalent fractions? Is 2 over 3 equal 4 over 5? No? OK. Not direct linear variation. It's pretty straightforward. All right, let's look at another one here. This one's a little bit more complicated. Um, again, the reason I'm doing this one um, as a little bit more complicated, having negatives and having fractions in there, is to show the importance of sometimes it's not as obvious as looking for equivalent fractions. Okay. So what we're going to do in this one is we're going to say, is there a constant of variation? I need to check that using my equation. So my constant of variation is equal to f of x divided by x. All right? f of x, negative 5 over 2, divided by my x value. My x value in that case was 5. All right? Again, I took those values from here. f of x, negative 5 over 2 x value 5. If I divide them, what do I get? Well, when you divide a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So I'd end up with negative 5 over 2 times the reciprocal of 5 is 1 over 5. I would cancel those out. 5 divided by 5 is 1. So my constant of variation should be negative 1 half. All right? That's what my constant of variation here was here for our first numbers, 5 and, and negative 5 halves. Now what I want to do is to take that and check and see, do I get that same variation for each term? What I could do, I could use this equation and just multiply my constant of variation times my x value. So is negative 1 half times 6 equal to negative 3? is negative 1 half times 7, negative 7 half. Negative 1 half times 8, negative 4. All right, I can use that equation. Or I can check out my constant equation and solve for this one. f of x, negative 3, divided by 6. Is that equal to negative 1 half? Both ways you see that it is. All right, I'll show you that in kind of on the board here. Is my constant of variation is f of x and negative 3 divided by 6. That is equal to negative 1 half. 
when we reduce that fraction to lowest terms. So my constant of variation here is negative one half. Now to check these two, I'll go ahead and use the original equation and multiply is negative seven halves. That's my f of x value. Is that equal to my constant times my x value? Is that equal to my constant, which was negative one half times seven? Yeah. When you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerator times the numerator. So yeah, negative seven over two is equal to negative seven over two. Okay, so we've checked that one using this equation. And we'll use that equation another time here. Is the function of x equal to our constant of negative one half times our x value of eight? Let's see, the function of x is equal to negative one half times eight. That's negative eight over two. So my function at x should be equal to negative four. And you'll notice that it is. So again, checking each of these. You can do it kind of either way. I showed you two different methods. One, you can use this equation here um, and check each one, f of x, or um, yeah, the f of x here is that output equal to our constant times x. And this one here as well is also useful for discovering what the constant is. Okay, so some things to remember. F of x is equal to our constant times our x value. That is direct linear variation. We're going to see some other types of um, variation. So be careful. This direct linear variation is when you multiply your constant times your x value and then you get an output. When one increases, the other increases and vice versa. So the number of items you're buying and the cost the number of hours you're working versus what you're paid, you know, if you're working hourly. Those are the types of real life examples that have to do with direct linear variation. In a table, they are equivalent fractions. So those are the three points to remember when working with direct linear variation.